Hey y'all, Monk Joseph here with the Broken Buddha. Going on to meal number three. This is my dinner meal. I may be able to do it in. I may be able to do this in one take, but I may have to do two videos for this because there's the explanation of eating by color, and then there is the actual meal itself. So let's get right into it. So um, I'll go ahead and show you what it is, and then I'll explain it. So what I do for my dinner meal is I make a like spaghetti sauce kind of. But with no garlic, no onion, because you can't do those things if you do energetic work. Uh, anybody who does that type of work knows that. So what I've got in here right now, first I put in the carrots because they are the hardest to cook. And obviously I've already been cooking this because it would no, it takes forever. So I put the carrots on the bottom because they're the hardest to cook. Then I put the mushrooms on the bottom, right, because they're next hardest to cook. Then comes the eggplant because of the skin. And then lastly, I do uh, green zucchini. I'm sorry, uh, zucchini, a.k.a. Italian squash. And then I have yellow squash. Okay, so while I'm waiting for that to cook down, I'm going to explain some things before I stir it. So my, my this meal is based on a like Tibetan shaman-style diet. Um, you could even say a yogi diet. I am trying to eat the five basic colors of uh that we we work with in shamanism right so that's going to be white which is what the mushrooms are for the carrots are orange and red so you're getting a little bit of fire and earth which i think makes metal depending on who you talk to about that not the point um all right so you got the carrot you got the uh <laughs> you got the carrots for uh yellow and red you got the mushrooms for white uh eggplant they actually it, it makes some compound cyan or something um so it actually pulls i mean it's it's known as pulling like the, the the blue spectrum the violet spectrum and violet spectrums out of the sun and again i'm just trying to pull all these different spectrums if you're going on a western understanding of this i am trying to consume a full spectrum of sunlight via diet and by being outside and stuff so that's why I have this like, you know, spectrum. It's just it's just a spectrum. I'm just trying to get whatever the sun offers in those different colors. I want it. And that being a vegan, it's kind of like all your only function is keeping that complete. All right. Um, and then what else? And then okay, so we covered up to eggplant, and then I of course have yellow squash representing earth, and then I have zucchini or Italian squash representing air if you're a bumpo or i believe would be water if you are a tibetan buddhist all right so there's the five colors um beyond that again like i said culinarily you want to stack the um oh sorry let me, let me sidestep here so and also with the colors they're all representing different elements okay so i go by the bumpo elements which is white for space uh green for air which is movement through space um, red for fire, yellow for earth, and blue for water. Okay, so I am also pulling in, if you want to go on an Eastern religious spiritual sense, I am trying to get all those things, spirit realm, tied to these things in this body. So, um, which is a little bit, uh, that probably confused some people, but, you know, study shamanism, I don't know what to tell you. Um, okay, so, you know, there's a, okay, I can say that better. There's a spirit side and a physical side to everything. There's a spiritual side to this. I just did a terrible job explaining it. All right. Now, moving forward. So you got the, the carrots down first because they're the hardest to cook. Uh, mushrooms second because they're next. And then eggplant. And then I do the yellow and green squash. This is actually really cool. I learned with the green squash that it helps fill in the sauce, you know, because it, like, shreds up and turns into, like, a little stew of its own. And same thing with the yellow squash. So, all right. So I'm going to go ahead and do some of this stuff. If for any reason this video does not go far enough and I have to make a second one, let me just go ahead and put this out there. This is the sauce that I'm using as a base. There is no seasonings in this. I mean, is there even salt in this? There's not even salt in this, all right? And this is crushed tomatoes, vine ripened from Cento. And when I'm done all this, I'm going to pour this on top and then add a whole other can of water. Because if you don't, it's like too concentrated and you won't get the sweetness of the, the vine ripe tomatoes. Okay, and if you're using other sauces, like um, I think Walmart has a really nice basil flavored sauce, but if you do that, you got to use two cans. Remember, I'm a monk. I live super poor. So this one can is cheaper than their one can, but I'd have to get two cans if I was doing that. Water is cheaper than another can of uh, tomato basil uh, sauce. All right, so once I get her going, I like to 
give about, yeah, I'm sure you know I'm like extremely methodical, so I do like eight stirs from the, the eight angles. And it actually has a very, uh, I don't know how to describe the smell. I mean, it almost, there's times where I get like a, a meat hint off of it because I, I ate meat for years. I worked in steakhouses for years. So not only did I eat meat, but I like, you know, went real hard with it. <laughs> Black and blue, super rare, all that good stuff. All right, so let's add the squash in. Add some the rest of the yellow zucchini in because there was some in that bowl. Okay, stick these up here. All right. Now let's give that a good eight angle mix in. So it looks like I may be able to do the whole thing in one video. I just don't like doing long videos unless it's like something for mental health or, or a long discussion or something. Good grief. Woo -hoo, woo -hoo, woo -hoo. Also, if you're um, not familiar and you're ever like my my only goal is to fill this pot up. This is just a pot of food. I'm gonna put this over uh, three cups of rice with a pretty heavy dose of coconut oil and salt. Sometimes pepper depends on feeling. Uh, not necessary though, really. And I am gonna try something new tonight. I'm actually I I, I might I got some coconut oil left. That's not going not assigned anywhere. So I may throw some coconut oil in my rice. And have like a vegetable curry. Yeah, I'd have to put a little bit of extra fat in the coconut milk. Yeah, but I could make like a vegetable curry with the coconut milk, put a little bit of turmeric on it. So there's all kinds of stuff and things you can do. And obviously, guys, I know you're going to put meat and garlic and onion and all kinds of seasoning in your stuff, and that's cool. But this is an awesome base. I mean, you guys are going to the store buying like ragu and pregu, and this is... It's more expensive, but I mean, like, you're getting actual vegetables. You're going to get the nutrients out of it. You're going to be healthier. And I will tell you that every time I eat a batch of this, the first bowl always feels great physiologically. So that's there. Okay, give two more turns, and I think that'll be – oh, that's what I was going to say. If you're not familiar with doing big pots, as you're uh, coming up, you kind of come here. As you're lifting, just go side to side. Super careful. If it's too full, then you'll roll over instead of turning. Like that. All right. So we're all set there, and that's probably going to be a few minutes. Um, again, if I uh, – I don't think I'll stop briefly or quickly, but this is the part where I usually like to let it sit for like, you know, I don't know. It, it, it really ranges time to time. I like to watch it real close. All right. So while that's doing that, let me pull this over here, my sauce. Um, and I'll talk about the cooking method for a little bit. Grab a little bit of, grab a little bit of go juice here. Yeah, there we go. All right. Um. All right. So, do, 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 do. cooking method. So, um, after this is all done. Sorry, I got I had a brain freeze there after my my, my go juice. Um, after this is all done, and when I do this, so right now it's on like a medium high right in between, dead right in the middle of between medium and high. So now I'm going to turn it down to medium. Normally I would turn it down to medium so that the vegetables kind of cook a little lightly. But I'm going to stir heavy today and add the sauce early. And then I go down to a medium low uh, after I add the sauce um, and a can of water. And that's going to stop your sauce from burning. So you want to get the vegetables started at like a medium high. Go to medium if you have to simmer them for a while longer, if it's like 20, 30 minutes and then go over to like a medium low for the sauce itself. All right. Um, what else we got? What am I missing here? What's making this awesome that I don't ever forget? Yeah, so again, typically I just do it over uh, a cup of rice, which turns into three cups of rice. I like basmati rice. Uh, Royal's been my, Royal brand has been my jam lately. Um, it changes. Some of the basmatis are like awesomely aromatic and uh, are a great complement to any Mediterranean or Persian dish. And then some basmatis are kind of dessert-like. I'd have to go back and see which one it was, but I I've had some dessert-like basmati rices that in that coconut uh, pineapple snack that I make, they were just freaking awesome. What do we got? What do we got? 
Yeah, it's yellow zucchini and squash cook pretty quick. Um, but not that quick. So we'll have to do what looks like a little more dialogue here, which I, I mean, from the looks of things, I've got endless words. All right, here we go. All right, we're still on medium high, so we should be cooking right. So this this diet actually, I got interested in these kind of diets when I was in China at the uh, the the academy where I was, uh, Kun Yushan Martial Arts Academy. Um, it actually has a really long title that I can never get out all the right at the same time. Anyway, they had these charts on the walls that had Qigong diets. I wish I would have taken pictures. I may have a picture somewhere. Um, but they had these charts and it was like season to season diets. And there was like, it wasn't like a, you should, they weren't suggestions. They were like, this is exactly what you eat in summer. This is exactly what you eat in winter. This is exactly what you eat in fall and all this stuff. And it wasn't, it was all based on color straight up. Like there was, yeah, it was a hundred percent based on color, but they were using the color spectrums. Or, I mean, the Taoist stuff is amazing because if you ever study Taoism, not the not like the ultra religious side of it, but like just the human and physiological side, they really got into the nitty gritty of like what is being human and how do we master this? Um, because they were able to realize, and if you do these things, you'll notice it physiologically. I haven't been able to go that far, but just from going this far, I know that if I go that far, I'll notice it. Um, but yeah, they were able to realize that absorbing the different spectrums of sunlight through food in different capacities in different seasons will help you adapt to those seasons. So again, I mean, I'm always kicking myself for not taking the pictures of those. And if anybody from Kunyushan has those charts, please post them here because it'd be awesome. Um, but that's what I base this off of. Um, and again, I'm, I'm just, I'm just, you know, vegan, keeping the endothelial function high and then bringing in whatever nutrients I can from the sunlight, you know, so if you are going to add meat to it, I guess all I ask is try to make it like grass fed, happy, organic meat, you know? Um, yeah. And I'm, I'll bet you this would be fire with some garlic and onion in it. But again, if you ever do spiritual work, not only do, is a, a lot of yogi culture um, against onion and garlic for that reason, but the Taoists are also uh, against garlic and onion for the same. It's very interesting. Whenever you get into energy work, no matter what culture it is, um, if you're going hardcore, meat and alcohol has got to go. And then if you're going not quite so hardcore, um, oh, good grief. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> yeah. So if, if, you know, if you're anyway, sorry, not the point, let's get back to this. I got, I got distracted and started rambling. I actually don't know that much about the Dallas modalities, to be honest with you. Um, they don't let their information out for lots of reasons, which is good and bad. It's good because if you ever find a real group, which is highly unlikely, you will get a purity of information like no other. But on the other side, because it has that degree of secrecy, um, your chances of finding a real teacher that's not just ripping you off are, I would say like, I'm going to say impossible, man. You got to have some type of golden horseshoe somewhere where golden horseshoes don't belong to meet a master like that. Yeah, we're getting there. I gotta wait for the, the, the very tip of the squash to disappear. And that's when I know it's gonna spaghetti up nicely when we're all done. And then again, when I add the sauce, I've like calculated this to be like, you know, it's two big eggplants. Um, eh, yeah, like medium large eggplants. Uh, the 16 or 20 ounce bag of carrot chips, 16 ounce. A uh, pack of mushrooms, just regular white mushrooms. I've tried the baby Bellas. I'm not a huge fan. Do -do -do -do. And then three yellow squash, and then three zucchini, and then in that can. And that's it. Do -do 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 -do. So yeah, so that's all three of my meals. Um, I will do the in between meal soon. Uh, as soon as I have, as soon as this is gone, and I have to make an in between meal, and then yeah. Yeah, sorry about that. That Dallas mix-up, man. I was on a roll and just I, I I lost my train of thought, and it's such a unknown. You know, even when I tried to, you guys know I study a lot of religious scripture. Even when I tried to do, uh, there was a Taoist scripture, I'd, Sun Tzu's treatise on the Tao, 
And it's actually kind of like a marriage of, it's like the first true marriage of Buddhism and Taoism, but it's the only book that's released from a mainstream school. I mean, there are other books out there. There's, uh, somebody told me about one I have to check out that's supposed to be like the go-to book. But again, you know, the who's who of who's who said that that was the first book to check out. So it's very interesting. The, the parables were, the parables and some of the poems were incredible. Um, but you can definitely see like, you can see the heart of Buddhism trying to get through to Taoists. And it is just like, um, it, it's, it, it was a fine, when you're watching it, it's a fine line to watch them walk because they have to make it clear that your bad behavior is unacceptable, but at the same time, make it clear that it's not necessarily, I don't know, a choice. I don't know how to say it, man. Like you, you got to read the book. It's called uh, Sun Tzu's The Treatise. I'm uh, not Sun Tzu, sorry. Lao Chu, Lao Chu. Yeah, Lao, Lao, Lao Chu, uh, Treatise on the Tao. Yeah, Response in Treatise to the Tao. Yeah, and you, uh, I think the one that I got was on, from a Sacred Literature series, Sacred Literature Trust series. All right, we should be able to move forward now. I see the middle of the squash coming apart on me now. So that's good. I don't know where to put this thing for the last time. Okay. And this is where it's starting to get that, like, nice funk, man. It's, it's a nice dinner funk, you know what I'm saying? I ain't ready for dinner yet. I got to let this cool off a while so I can put it away. But, yeah, it's a nice dinner funk. And I've been trying to get into the half cooking because I'm not trying to over uh, – at first I was doing uh, just, like, trying to look for softer meals. And then coming out of it, I kind of want to see – if I can find, um, and I, I was doing soft meals because as I've gotten older, I've had, you know, you have a tooth issue here and there and you got to have a soft meal when you're going through a tooth issue. This actually seems like a good half soft. I'm about to add the sauce right now because I've never done half soft and we're going to, we're going to do it together. My very first half cooked squashes. Like obviously the other vegetables are a little bit more cooked, maybe even overcooked, but I want a little more heartiness in my food and they say it's good for you. So let's do it. All right. Let's do this. Okay, so big old can. And again, we're gonna turn the heat down now. So we'll go uh, slightly under medium. Whoop. Okay, let's see what I can do with this. Obviously, if you can use filtered water, use filtered water. It's just a different taste, man. If you can't taste the chlorine and fluoride in your water, you know, good for you. But trust me when I say I know it's there. You don't taste the fluoride, but you can taste and smell the chlorine. And if you're an athlete and you've ever drank too much tap water in your life, then you would remember pretty much sweating straight, uh, straight chlorine. Okay, so we got that in there. Give a nice little stir up. This usually cleans the can out real nice. It gets all any uh, fine ripe tomato that I'm missing in there because I want to get it all. All right. Pour it over the lid. Uh-oh. Oh. I may have. I've never. That's like borderline the fullest I've ever seen it. Okay. I can work with this. All right. So that's it, guys. After that, I'm just going to stir it up. Uh, turn it down to a low heat or medium low, like right, definitely not on the medium, but more closer to the low side. And I, again, am a very methodic person, methodical person. So I will stir this up really nice until I see three spots of bubbles three times. And then I turn off the heat. Well, as soon as I see the third time, I turn off the heat and stir it one last time and then it's good. And I just do that so that I know that the sauce has gotten nice and infused into my vegetables. Like, cause right now, I mean, technically you could stir it and eat it and it's a meal, but if you give it that extra, like five or 10 minutes and let it soak in and simmer, that way, you know, you'll have a nice vine, right? Tomato flavor in every single bite. Dang. I sound like a commercial. I worked at restaurants and stuff too long. All right. So I'm not going to wait for all that. I just wanted to give you a good mix up. And 
And then this is your final dish. Yeah. Put that over some rice and cook it all. It is phenomenal. The bouquet it's putting off right now is just phenomenal. All right. So there we have it. I'm going to let that sit. And look for my first set of three bubbles. Actually, I'm going to do it one more stir before I put a lid on and conclude. I'm going to go back and watch this video and feel super dumb when I see that spot where I dropped the ball with the Dallas information.